money coming into the United States for the first time ever. Uh, tremendous amounts of money in many different forms, including tariffs. Our farmers now have been taken care of well. China has already started their purchases. There was some uh, misreporting, which does not, uh, frankly, uh, I, I'm not at all surprised, but there's been some uh, misreporting uh, that China will start purchasing when the deal is signed. The deal is being papered right now. Uh, Bob Lighthizer is with us. Uh, Mike Pompeo is with us, and they're going to be joining us for the discussion. But there have been some uh, reports that China is not buying until the deal is signed. No, China started buying already from the farmers. It'll be anywhere from 40 to 50 billion, which is far more than anybody thought or expected. It's a great deal for the farmers. I think the farmers will come out, along with many other industries in the United States, will come out as one of the big beneficiaries of the trade deal with China. But they have already started purchasing. In fact, they started purchasing three weeks ago. You can see the numbers for yourself. Uh, it's great for our country. It's great for, I think it's great for China, too. Uh, but it's uh, something that's already taken effect, even though the deal won't be signed, probably until I meet with President Xi in Chile, where we have a summit. So that'll be good. But the uh, world trade, as you know, we won seven and a half. Uh, billion dollars, and uh, that is being distributed among various countries in the European Union. Uh, Italy is one of those countries, and I know that the uh, President of Italy wants to uh, discuss that. It's one of the discussions. And the other thing, of course, is trade and uh, numerous elements of the military and terrorism and security. So we'll be discussing everything. Please. Um. È un piacere veramente avere uh, qui il Presidente Mattarella dell'Italia. Abbiamo degli ottimi rapporti con l'Italia, mai stati così buoni come adesso. Come avete saputo, gli Stati Uniti hanno vinto un aggiudicato dall'Ufficio Mondiale del Commercio per ben 7 miliardi e mezzo eh, di uh, uh, premi che sono stati pagati. E questo è nei confronti dell'Unione Europea. Anche l'Italia farà parte, dovrà fare parte di questo pagamento. L'Italia si lamenta di questo, si lamenta anche la Turchia, la Turchia si lamenta di tante cose in questo momento, ma ci stiamo, ci stiamo occupando della Turchia in maniera giusta. Eh, come avete saputo, appunto, ripeto che per la prima volta gli Stati Uniti stanno ricevendo dei eh, pagamenti di premi che gli sono dovuti mai come prima nella, eh, nella storia degli Stati Uniti. E poi ci sono stati anche, non mi sorprende, dei rapporti, dei, dei racconti da parte della stampa che la Cina non ha, eh, comincerà a comprare i prodotti dei nostri eh, prodotti agricoli soltanto dopo la fine, la prima dell'accordo. Questo non è vero, eh, è già tre settimane fa la Cina ha cominciato a comprare eh, prodotti dei nostri agricoltori che quindi eh, sarà per un, circa un valore di circa 40, 50 miliardi di dollari e i nostri agricoltori finalmente beneficeranno di questo. E quindi, ripeto, questo è un momento importante per noi perché finalmente negli Stati Uniti si riequilibra le, le giuste compensazioni per le cose che abbiamo fatto e poi con il Presidente Mattarella naturalmente, siccome appunto di questi 7 miliardi e mezzo che saranno distribuiti fra i vari paesi europei, anche l'Italia ne fa parte, sono sicuro che il Presidente Mattarella parlerà proprio di questo e parleremo anche di questioni generali del commercio, del terrorismo e delle questioni militari. And I'm pleased to report that in Syria, Turkey, the border, we only had 28 soldiers, not 50. We thought it was 50. Uh, somebody reported 50. It was actually down to 28. They were removed a while ago. Uh, all American soldiers are away from the site. Uh, Syria and Turkey may fight. Syria is friendly with the Kurds. Uh, the Kurds are uh, very well protected. Uh, plus, they know how to fight. And by the way, they're no angels, but uh, they were with us. They are no angels, uh, but uh, they are uh, fighting. Uh, we are uh, largely out of that area. We're uh, very well set. We have uh, quite a contingent right nearby of soldiers and uh, of the finest equipment in the world. I don't think we'll have to use it. So Syria is uh, either negotiating with or talking to Turkey. We're also talking to Turkey. We put massive sanctions on Turkey. Uh, sanctions work, uh, frankly, better than fighting, certainly when you're down to 28 people. Uh, we're not going to be fighting. We don't want to fight anyway. I don't think there's any reason to. 
from the United States standpoint. Now, as to Syria wanting to take back their land, that's a whole different story. If Syria wants to fight for their land, that's up to Turkey and Syria, as it has been for hundreds of years they've been fighting. And the Kurds have been fighting for hundreds of years. That whole mess, uh, it's been going along for a long time. Syria may have some help with Russia, and that's fine. Uh, it's a lot of sand. They've got a lot of sand over there, so there's a lot of sand that they can play with. But we were supposed to be there for 30 days. We stayed for 10 years. And it's time for us to come home. We're not a policing agent. And it's time for us to come home. But we're working with Turkey. We're working with talking to everybody in the area. Whatever we can do to keep it stable or stabilize it as much as possible, knowing that it's possibly never going to be very stable. And uh, we are, I think we're in a very good position in the Middle East. I think we're very, very strong in the Middle East. Iran is going to hell. Their economy is in deep trouble. Uh, their GDP went down 20 percent, which nobody ever even heard of before. Probably 25 percent. Uh, we'll be talking to Iran also. They want very much to talk. Uh, the sanctions with Iran, all of the things that we've done, including some tariffs, and different things having to do with countries that are dealing with them that we put on. the uh, All of the economic sanctions are working very well. Uh, so Iran will be an interesting case, but we'll see. They want to talk. We'll see whether or not they talk. If they talk, good. And if they don't talk, that's okay, too. But I think we're doing a very good job in the sense of strategically uh, we have Syria talking about their land. It's not our land. Uh, Turkey has gone on to Syria. And if Turkey goes under Syria, that's between Turkey and Syria. It's not between Turkey and the United States, like a lot of stupid people would like us to, would like you to believe. And I watched last night, a couple of people understood. Actually, a couple of the Democrats, I won't say which ones, uh, but a couple of the more competent Democrats actually understood what I was doing and what the plan is. Uh, but really, the plan is to get out of endless wars, to bring our soldiers back home, to not be policing agents all over the world. If you look at other countries, Russia, China, they don't have countries to take care of. We have, we're close to 90 countries in one form or another. We're in 90 countries all over the world policing. And frankly, many of those countries, they don't respect what we're doing. They don't even like what we're doing and they don't like us. So we're looking all over the world. There's tremendous amounts of money, manpower, lives that we save by doing it much differently. If uh, people aren't respecting what we're going to be doing, that's too bad. You read uh, where we're sending some troops to Saudi Arabia. That's true, because we want to help Saudi Arabia. They have been a very good ally. Uh, they've agreed to pay for the cost of those troops. They've agreed to pay fully for the cost of everything we're doing over there. That's something you have never heard before, I think, as long as you've been standing out there. I think you, the media has never heard that before. Uh, but uh, Saudi Arabia has graciously agreed to pay for the full cost of everything we're doing for them. We're sending some tremendous missiles over. We're sending some great power over to Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is paying for 100 percent of the cost, including the cost of our soldiers. And that negotiation took a very short time, like maybe about 35 seconds. Um, I would like now to introduce the President of Italy to say a few words. And I'm sure you're going to have many questions for him. Thank you. Vorrei dirvi soprattutto darvi notizie su quello che succede nel confine fra la Siria e la Turchia. Noi abbiamo soltanto avevamo soltanto 28 soldati americani, non 50 come l'ho detto, e sono stati già evacuati, quindi sono lontani dal pericolo. E noi abbiamo la Turchia adesso. Uh, sarà in, è in uh, contatto con la Siria, forse sono in contatto, non lo so, comunque eh, noi abbiamo un contingente lì vicino, ben attrezzato, con tantissime armi dell'ultima generazione, non credo che dovremo uh, uh, utilizzarlo. Comunque i curdi sono protetti dalla Siria, i curdi sono, e va bene questo, sono dei buoni combattenti, certo non sono degli angeli, Ma comunque questo è un problema che sta andando a vedere fra la Siria e la Turchia. Eh, nei confronti della Turchia noi comunque abbiamo eh, spiccato delle massicce sanzioni eh, nei loro confronti. Eh, adesso appunto eh, questo conflitto deve essere risolto eh, fra eh, la Turchia e eh, la Siria, non fra gli Stati Uniti e con, e con la Siria come tante persone stolte hanno 
eh, proposto. Eh, e poi eh, eh, c'è anche la questione dell'Iran. L'Iran eh, che ha avuto eh, per la prima volta in, uh, un calo del proprio uh, PIL del 20%, anzi quasi del 25%, Uh, e l'Iran proprio a seguito delle, massi delle sanzioni che abbiamo spiccato nei loro confronti e anche dei dazi che abbiamo imposto ai paesi che fanno commercio insieme a loro e quindi tutto va bene, noi stiamo facendo un buon lavoro al Medio Oriente eh, la Siria se la vede con la Turchia eh, per una questione che va avanti da centinaia di anni eh, e noi eh, non vogliamo più fare il poliziotto in tutto il mondo come abbiamo fatto fino adesso il nostro piano è molto chiaro infatti se vedete le altre potenze tipo la Russia e la Cina non si occupano di altri paesi invece noi siamo ben presenti in 90 paesi e tutto questo ci costa tanti soldi e molto spesso non siamo nemmeno apprezzati per cui i paesi devono cominciare a rispettare quello che noi facciamo uh, sì è vero manderemo de abbiamo mandato delle truppe in Arabia Saudita eh, perché deve essere aiutata l'Arabia Saudita comunque per la prima volta nella storia ha, um, uh, ha consentito a pagare completamente tutte le truppe tutti i missili che noi li mandiamo tutto, questo è senza precedenti adesso eh, permettetemi a questo punto di eh, dare la parola al Presidente Mattarella se desidera dire qualche cosa ringrazio molto il Presidente Trump per, per l'invito e per l'accoglienza qui alla Casa Bianca per le sue parole lo ringrazio anche per le considerazioni che ha appena fatto di grande interesse, ha elencato alcuni degli argomenti di cui parleremo in questo incontro, quel che è certo è che ne parleremo in un atteggiamento di lealtà e collaborazione piena, come vi è tra, tra amici che sono sinceri, che sono alleati, in quanto l'alleanza si basa su vincoli storici, di valori, di cultura e di rapporti umani, come quella del degli americani di origine italiana e del, non a caso in questo mese si celebra l'eritage di titolo americano. Well, Mr. President, thank you very much for your kind invitation and for a very warm welcome to the White House. Uh, thank you for the very interesting remarks you just made. Uh, I'm sure we will be discussing all of these issues during our talks later on. Uh, in a full spirit of loyalty and cooperation, which is what friends and allies have to do. Uh, Italy and the U.S. Uh, share a set of values, uh, a set of cultures. Uh, our bond is uh, fostered by our human relations. And I'm very pleased to be here uh, in this moment in time as we celebrate uh, the Italian-American Heritage Month. I just want to add that this encounter here in the Casa Bianca, in which I had the great pleasure to meet the President, I have seen him in Italy the days of the G20 at Tormina, two years behind, e all'insegna della conferma della grande amicizia che vi è tra Stati Uniti e Italia, della grande amicizia che si esprime nel rapporto transatlantico, ma che ha delle storiche umane particolarmente importanti. Grazie, signor Presidente. E ancora, sono molto felice di essere qui per parlare con te, signor Presidente. È un piacere di vedere di nuovo dopo che ci siamo incontrati al G20 Summit in Taormina, Sicilia. Um, our meeting, again, is proof of the friendship between our countries, uh, as also testified by our uh, common belonging to the Atlantic Alliance, and of course by the human uh, bonds that uh, our countries share, and by the long friendship and alliance that we have. The giorni di Città Taormina abbiamo, abbiamo avuto un, un tempo magnifico, Presidente ricorderà, ma anche ieri qui a Washington di sera c'era un sole magnifico, e questo è... Questo incontrarci in posti diversi sottolinea come il rapporto dei nostri paesi sia particolarmente forte. And as you may remember, Mr. President, uh, when we met at the summit in Taormina, the weather was uh, it was also beautiful here yesterday as well. And of course the fact that we can meet in different places around the world testifies uh, to how uh, solid uh, our bonds are. I think the bonds between Italy and the United States have never been more solid. I have so many Italian friends. I can't tell you how many Italian friends, and uh, we have a lot also in your government. We have a lot of great friends in your government. I think the WTO award uh, has been a testament to a lot of good work by the Trump administration. Uh, we never won with the WTO, or essentially never won. Very seldom did we win. And now we're winning a lot. Uh, we're winning a lot because uh, they know if we're not treated fairly, we're leaving. Because we were a piggy bank that every other country was robbing. 
And China became rich because of the WTO. That's when China really ascended it. That's when China went up. That's when they made their great rise. They were flatlining. And then all of a sudden, around the year 2000, 2001, when they got involved with the WTO, it became a whole different story. And China was taking $500 billion a year out of the United States, plus uh, intellectual property theft and many other things. And it was, I give China a lot of credit. I give the people that ran our country uh, no credit. I give them discredit for what they allowed to happen. But the WTO, it's a World Trade Organization, has been very unfair to the United States. They know I feel that way, and I think since they know I feel that way, they all of a sudden we're starting to win very big awards. The seven and a half billion dollars that we won is going to be discussed. The uh, percentage, a percentage of that is to be paid by Italy, and Italy thinks that we're charging them too much, and we will certainly take that under consideration, and we will discuss that today. We're also discussing some very big uh, trade deals. Actually, Italy is a very uh, uh, partner with us. We do a lot of trade together. And they make incredible product. We buy and they buy, and we have a very good relationship, uh, sometimes stymied by the European Union, which is frankly very tough to deal with and very, uh, very tough negotiators, very unfair negotiators. Uh, they know I feel that way, and uh, we'll see what happens ultimately with the European Union. But uh, they have been very unfair to the United States. Uh, Italy, on the other hand, uh, they've been a great partner. Please. Sì, i legami fra i nostri paesi non sono mai stati così forti come adesso. E di nuovo io voglio sottolineare il fatto che l'ha giudicato il nostro favore da parte dell'OMC, eh, un testamento e testimonianza del lavoro operato della mia amministrazione. Mai abbiamo vinto, o se abbiamo vinto molto raramente. E la Cina in effetti si è arricchita attraverso l'OMC. Eh, prima del 2000-2001 l'economia era piatta, poi con una la, la, la cessione all'OMC, le cose sono cambiate e ogni anno hanno preso 500 miliardi di dollari dagli Stati Uniti più il furto della proprietà intellettuale. Quindi, per carità, io do molto credito alla Cina e al loro popolo, ma non credito alle persone dalla parte nostra, del nostro governo. Comunque, come ripeto, questi 7 miliardi e mezzo che devono essere eh, ripagati a noi, eh, naturalmente una parte deve essere pagata anche dall'Italia, l'Italia eh, si, eh, si dimostra di questo e noi ne parleremo in effetti perché l'Italia è uno dei nostri partner commerciali maggiori, abbiamo degli ottimi rapporti e mentre i negoziati con l'Unione Europea sono a volte difficili e spinosi, l'Italia si è sempre dimostrata un uh, partner equo e valido con noi. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, are you okay with Erdogan saying that he's not going to do a ceasefire? He didn't say that at all. He's meeting, and he's uh, meeting today with some of our representatives. Uh, Mike Pence is leaving today, as you know. We needed to take an extra day for security reasons. Uh, but Mike is leaving. Uh, Mike Pompeo will be meeting also, uh, who's here right now with us, and he's going to be joining the meeting. We have. Uh, a lot of great people over there, we'll see. In the meantime, uh, our soldiers are not in harm's way, as they shouldn't be, as two countries fight over land. That has nothing to do with us. And uh, the Kurds are much safer right now, but the Kurds know how to fight. And as I said, they're not angels. They're not angels. If you take a look, you have to go back and take a look. But they fought with us. Uh, we paid a lot of money for them to fight with us, and that's okay. Uh, they did well when they fought with us. They didn't do so well when they didn't fight with us. Uh, when I refused to allow the Americans a year and a half ago to fight with the Kurds against Iraq, I said, wait a minute, this country stupidly just spent a fortune on fighting for, with, around Iraq. Nobody knows how they spent it. But they spent, actually, we're in the Middle East now for $8 trillion, if you can believe that stupidity. But in Iraq, we're in for probably five and a half trillion. So they're telling me, wait a minute, we just spent five and a half trillion fighting in Iraq and with Iraq. And now we're supposed to spend money to fight with the Kurds against Iraq. I said, no, thank you. So what happens is when I said we're not going to fight with the Kurds, the Kurds left. They didn't want to fight against Iraq, which right now isn't the greatest fighting force in the world. That happened twice. The Kurds actually are pulling back substantially from Turkey. 
And Syria is pulling in. Syria probably will have a partner of Russia, whoever they may have. Uh, I wish them all a lot of luck. You know, Russia was involved in Afghanistan. It used to be called the Soviet Union. Now it's called Russia for a reason, because they lost so much money in Afghanistan that uh, they had a downsize, a very big downsizing. So if Russia wants to get involved with, the, uh, with Syria, that's really up to them. They have a, a problem with Turkey. They have a problem at a border. It's not our border. We shouldn't be losing lives over it. But again, we only had 28 soldiers. It was 26, 28. I got all different numbers. It ends up being 28, between the 26, 28, two people, and they're fully accounted for. So that's the story. It's very simple. And we're watching, and we're negotiating, and we're trying to get Turkey to do the right thing, because we'd like to stop wars regardless, whether Americans are in or whether they're not in. Uh, we want to see wars stop. That's a very important thing. On a humanitarian basis, we want to see that happen. Steve? How confident are you that Mike Pence oh. will be able to Sorry. arrange a ceasefire? Why don't you go and yes. take that? Yes, um, they, uh, the answer was I'll, I'll no, not at all. Um, <laughs> Stiamo negoziando assolutamente e infatti il vicepresidente Pence sta andando in Turchia adesso e tra qualche giorno ci andrà anche il segretario di Stato Pompeo e stiamo negoziando e staremo a vedere quello che succede eh, però appunto come eh, ripeto come ho detto prima io ho tanto messo in salvo i nostri soldati tutti e 28 e sono uh, sono al salvo adesso loro i siriani i curdi sono protetti uh, dai russi se la russia si vuole uh, vuole occuparsi della della siria sono affari loro uh, quello si sono occupati per tanti anni dell'afghanistan e proprio a causa di quello hanno dovuto subire delle grossissime perdite per questo che non si chiama più Unione Sovietica ma uh, Russia e io per quanto riguarda i curdi l'ho detto eh, sì sono i curdi eh, abbiamo la, combattuto bene insieme a loro al loro fianco li abbiamo pagati per fare questo ma va bene come ho detto prima non sono degli angeli però io mi sono opposto quando mi è stato proposto di combattere insieme ai curdi contro l'Iraq perché non fa senso non ha senso dopo tutti gli investimenti tutto quello che abbiamo fatto più di 5 miliardi e mezzo che abbiamo speso in Iraq adesso non voglio assolutamente rigirarmi dietro e eh, combattere contro l'Iraq che invece è una forza stabile eh, quindi come dicevo prima se eh, noi eh, siamo assolutamente con, eh, intenti e determinati a continuare i negoziati con la Turchia per evitare a tutti i costi che ci sia la guerra e soprattutto che eh, si esacerbi ancora di più la questione umanitaria. So I view the situation on the Turkish border with Syria to be for the United States strategically brilliant. Our soldiers are out of there. Our soldiers are totally safe. They've got to work it out. Maybe they can do it without fighting. Syria is protecting the Kurds. Uh, that's good. Uh, we are, uh, and by the way, every player hates ISIS. Everybody we're talking about. Syria more than us. Russia more than us. They've done a big number on Russia. And we're over there fighting ISIS, but they're over there fighting ISIS too. They can handle it. And they should handle it. We can fight our own battles on our own territories. But you have a lot of countries over there that hate ISIS as much as we do. In some cases, probably more. So they can take care of ISIS. We have them captured. The United States captured them. Some were released just for effect, to make us look a little bit like, oh, gee, we got to get right back in there. But you have a lot of countries over there that have power and that hate ISIS very much, as much as we do. So I think we're in a very strategically good position. I know the fake news doesn't make it look that way. Uh, but we have, uh, we've removed uh, all of our, as we said, 50 soldiers, but much less than 50 soldiers. Uh, they're now in a very, uh, very safe location, uh, heading into an even safer location. And we will help negotiate. We have tremendously powerful sanctions. Our country has become economically much more powerful than, frankly, it ever was. We picked up trillions and trillions of dollars in worth. The market was up big yesterday. It's going to be up big today, it looks like, the trade deal with China, just having to do with what we've done with the financial services, with banks, with, uh, with the farmers, has been incredible, far greater than anyone ever thought. 
Uh, I agree it hasn't been papered yet, but it's being papered. But in the meantime, as you know, and as we've said many times, uh, China's already started buying. They want to buy. They want to make a deal. They really have to make a deal. Their economy's been hurt very badly by what we've done and by the tariffs that we've charged. And we've taken in tremendous amounts of tariffs. A small portion of them we've given to the farmer, which, farmers, which is more than made up for what they've lost. Go ahead. Sì, no, come dicevo prima, appunto, uh, noi, la situazione degli Stati Uniti dal punto di vista di posizione strategica nel, nel confine Turchia-Siria è brillante. Noi abbiamo messo al riparo i nostri soldati e adesso sarà al, ai paesi lì sul terreno a, a trovare una soluzione e a combattere. Per quanto riguarda l'ISIS, tutti, tanti, noi non siamo i soli a odiare l'ISIS, a combattere contro l'ISIS, tutti gli altri paesi, la Siria, la Russia, la Turchia, tutti ce l'hanno con l'ISIS e eh, troveranno il modo di continuare a combattere e di risolvere la situazione. Noi abbiamo catturato i terroristi l'ISIS, poi qualcuno li ha rilasciati solamente per eh, far vedere che il problema di l'ISIS poteva ritornare, ma ritorno sul fatto a dire che la posizione degli Stati Uniti in quella zona è una posizione strategica eh, eh, brillante, abbiamo messo a riparo i nostri soldati e, eh, e continuiamo a negoziare imponendo delle sanzioni. Gli Stati Uniti proprio eh, per questo è una potenza economica fortissima, mai come prima abbiamo ricevuto tantissimi tagliati di dollari, di rimborso, i mercati azionari vanno bene, adesso andranno ancora meglio se eh, quando firmeremo il raccordo con la Cina, perché la Cina vuole fare il uh, contratto con noi ha bisogno di questo e hanno già cominciato a comprare e poi c'è stato appunto l'accordo uh, per i nostri farmers, i nostri agricoltori uh, che uh, con, uh, riceveranno una parte di questi uh, benefici. And because of the newfound economic power of the United States, because of the fact that we've made so many trillions, many, many trillions of dollars in worth uh, of the United States, uh, I call it a, the newfound economic power. If uh, my opponent would have won, China would right now be the most powerful nation economically in the world, and right now they're not even close. And if we're smart, they never will get close. Uh, but uh, it depends on who sits in this chair. But uh, the United States has tremendous economic power, far more power than playing around with having a few soldiers shooting, shooting each other at the border. I mean, you have a few soldiers back and forth, killing each other at the border. The power we have with sanctions and tariffs is far greater than what we're talking about. With that being said, our military has been completely rebuilt. Much of the equipment's already been delivered. We spent two and a half trillion dollars rebuilding it over the last three years. And our, our military power is at the highest level, and our economic power is at the highest level. But I'd always rather use economic power before I use military power, because people aren't getting killed with economic power. Prima che la vostra collega introducesse nuovamente l'argomento che il Presidente Trump ha trattato, il Presidente Trump ha parlato con molta cortesia della questione dei, dei possibili dazi conseguenti alla vicenda dei finanziamenti europei all'Airbus. Io vorrei naturalmente un argomento di cui parleremo questa mattina con il Presidente e io mi auguro che sia, che sia possibile, come ritengo, trovare un metodo di confronto collaborativo che eviti una, uno scambio di, di provvedimenti ricorsivi tra le due parti. A me sembra e all'Italia sembra che sia preferibile nello spirito transatlantico incontrarsi per confrontare le posizioni e cercare insieme una soluzione che tenga conto, in cui ciascuna delle due parti tenga conto delle esigenze e delle ragioni dell'altra parte. L'alternativa a quella di imporre dazi che probabilmente chiamerebbero delle reazioni per poi ripetere questa vicenda tra qualche mese quando la Commissione Mondiale del Commercio ha adottato provvedimenti riguardanti i finanziamenti sul, per la Boeing e rischia di metterci su una strada che poi renderà comunque indispensabile un punto di incontro e un'intesa. Tanto vale cercarla subito e perseguirla subito. 
And um, <coughs> uh, before um, the members of the press introduce topics that have already been this morning, um, President Trump was talking about the uh, possible uh, implementation of tariffs uh, on European products following the whole Airbus affair. Uh, of course, that's a topic that we will certainly be discussing this morning, and I do hope that we can come up with a uh, cooperative-based uh, approach uh, and a frank discussion so that we can avoid retaliation between the two parties. Uh, Italy and I myself personally uh, have always felt that it's uh, better to talk things through, uh, to find a common solution, to find uh, some sort of understanding uh, for one another's stances. Uh, because the alternative to that would be uh, tariffs, followed by retaliation, followed by further tariffs. Uh, and we also have to understand that we are waiting for a, a solution of the uh, Boeing affair as well. Uh, so of course, within the spirit of the Atlantic Alliance, within the spirit of the friendship we've always had, uh, I do feel it would be best to uh, uh, discuss these things and understand one another. Well, in theory, there can't be retaliation because this was an award that we got because of the fact that the European Union took advantage of past presidents. And this was an award that we got for the unfair treatment given to the United States by the European Union. So there should be no retaliation. This was getting us even because seven and a half billion dollars worth of things happened, bad things happened, unfair things happened to the United States by the European Union. So this was just getting us back to even. And nobody else but me would have gotten that seven and a half billion dollars back for the taxpayers of the United States. Beh, non credo che si possa parlare veramente di ritorsioni perché la giudicato dell'OMC nei confronti degli Stati Uniti è stato proprio a seguito di un uh, di un fatto che l'Unione Europea si è preso uh, si è approfittata del di un, un commercio inequo con gli Stati Uniti. Adesso siamo pari e questi 7 miliardi e mezzo che abbiamo avuto nessun altro presidente sarebbe riuscito ad averlo. Yeah. Mr. President? Yeah. Um, I'm sure you saw reports that uh, John Bolton said that Rudy Giuliani was like a hand grenade the way he was uh, acting. Um, and are, are you concerned that Bolton could be called to testify in your impeachment inquiry? No, look, John Bolton, I got along well with him. Some people didn't. Some people didn't like John Bolton. I actually got along with him pretty well. Uh, it just didn't work out. I don't know that he got along with Rudy Giuliani. Rudy Giuliani was seeking out corruption and what happens mostly in the 2016 election because there was tremendous corruption in the 2016 election. I think even you would admit that. Uh, the election was, uh, it was disgraceful what happened and what happened to me and what happened to the Republicans. And that continues with Nancy Pelosi and with Schiff. Adam Schiff got caught making up statements that he said I said that I didn't say, which is fraud. I mean, it's purely fraudulent. So it continues. So Rudy was a great prosecutor. He was the best mayor in the history of the city of New York, as far as I can see. I think he's pretty much acknowledged what he did with her crime and everything else. And when he saw what was going on with our election, of 2016, the election I won, but the election that was absolutely corrupted by things that took place in government. Now, we'll see what happens. The IG report's going to come out soon, and uh, we'll see what happens. I think people, I know nothing about it uh, in terms of the report. I'm waiting for the report like everybody else, but I predict you will see things that you don't even believe, the level of corruption, uh, whether it's Comey, whether it's uh, Strzok and uh, his lover Page, uh, whether it's so many other people, McCabe, whether it's President Obama himself. Let's see whether or not it's President Obama. Let's see whether or not they put that in. Wait a minute. Let's see whether or not. So Rudy uh, saw that, and I can tell you Rudy Giuliani because he was very, very incensed at the uh, horrible things that he saw, as are many people, okay, and many Republicans. And the Republicans have been treated very unfairly by the Democrats. I'll say this. Paul Ryan would never issue a subpoena. I don't say right or wrong. He wouldn't do it. He had too much respect for our country. Nancy Pelosi hands him out like cookies. Everybody, I, I don't even know these people. For the most part, people like that at test I don't even know who they are. I never even heard of some of them, most of them. But I have all these people testifying. And then they leak out. They don't say the good parts. They only say the bad parts. We're not allowed to representation. We're not allowed to lawyers. We're not allowed to have anything. The Democrats are treating the Republicans very, very badly. Fortunately, we have a lot of good, strong, smart Republicans. But they never dealt, John, with the Democrats the way the Democrats deal. And the Republicans won't forget it. 
because what they're doing, what the Democrats are doing to this nation is a disgrace. What they have done, the disrespect that they've shown to the presidency, and it'll happen to them, because if the Republicans have the House, which I think they will, because of impeachment, I think that because of this nonsense uh, impeachment, it's based on a perfect phone conversation, an absolutely perfect phone conversation with the president of Ukraine. A friend of mine who's a top lawyer read it, said, this is perfect. You didn't say, did you know this was going to happen? I actually thought it was going to happen. There were many people listening to that conversation, because when I speak to a leader, like if I speak to the president of Italy, if I speak to anybody, I know that there are many intelligence people on the line. I know that. I mean, with my understanding and knowledge. I don't know exactly who, but I assume there are many people. Fortunately, they had uh, transcribers, stenographers, people that do this for a living on the line because we have an exact copy of the report, of the, of the call. So the call was put out immediately when I started hearing about the whistleblower. Well, the whistleblower's report was totally wrong. The whistleblower didn't know what he was talking about or was given false information or was even worse than that. Now, all of a sudden, Schiff doesn't want to talk to the whistleblower. Now, all of a sudden, quid pro quo doesn't matter because now they see in the call there was no quid pro quo. So, with Rudy, Rudy was seeking out corruption. And I think there's nothing wrong with seeking out corruption. But, but, but Rudy, you have Steve? Rudy registers a foreign lobbyist. Though. I don't That's know what he's doing here. I, yeah, I don't know. That's up to him. To you. That you have to ask. Excuse me. No. You have to ask Rudy those questions. Don't ask me. But Rudy was mo one of many people that was incensed at the corruption that took place during that election. Pure corruption. For instance, I still ask the FBI, where is the server? How come the FBI never got the server from the DNC? Where is the server? I want to see the server. Let's see what's on the server. So the server, they say, is held by a company whose primary ownership individual is from Ukraine. I'd like to see the server. I think it's very important for this country to see the server. Nobody wants to see it. The media never wants to see it. But I'll tell you, Republicans want to see it. So Republicans aren't treated well. And here's the problem. I think we're going to take the House based on what's happening with the impeachment stuff. And the Republicans can do the same thing in reverse if they ever have. And I hope it's going to be a long time, because nobody's done a better job with the economy, with our military. With our, I've rebuilt the military. Our economy is the best it's ever been. We have numbers that just came out where, not including taxes, the median household income for the average American has increased $5,000 in a very short time since I've been president. Nobody's ever heard of numbers like that. So people want to find out, why was it so corrupt during that election? And I want to find out more than anybody else. Steve, go ahead. The, uh, the, one of the things that has been exposed by this Turkey situation is that as many as 50 nuclear weapons uh, are at Incirlik Air Base in Turkey. How confident are you of the, those weapons' safety? We're, we're confident, and we have a great, uh, a great air base there, a very powerful air base. That air base alone can take any place. It's a large, powerful air base. And you know, Turkey, just so people remember, Turkey is a NATO member. We're supposed to get along with our NATO members. And Turkey is a NATO member. Do people want us to start shooting at a NATO member? That would be a first. And that's all involved having to do with NATO. Yeah. Mr. President, you're going to be seeing House Speaker Nancy Pelosi today. What, how do you anticipate that? Well, I'd, I'd say this. I think that she's uh, done this country a tremendous disservice. Uh, she's uh, created a phony witch hunt, another one. First one failed. They're all failing. This one is just absolutely crazy. All you have to do is read the transcript of the call. Read the transcript. This is a open and shut, simple case. They're desperate because they know they're going to lose the election. They're desperate to do something because they know they're going to lose the election. This administration has created the strongest economy in the history of our country. We have the greatest stock market. We had over 100 times we broke the record for stock market. People's, for, if you look at people's stocks, their 401ks, if you look at anything you want to look at, they're far better off now than they probably ever have been in this country. Record stock markets. And don't forget, stock markets, not just rich people, it's all people. 
because all people own in the stock markets. New York Stock Exchange, all of them, they're at record highs. Nobody's ever done what we've done. So they're playing games. They figure they can't win the election. So maybe we can find some ground. We'll get somebody that Trump never met. And maybe they'll say something bad about Trump. And if they do really bad, maybe it can stick a little bit. I don't think it's going to work. They've treated the Republican Party with great disrespect. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.